Hey guys, Fanny Boy here, and today I have the Samsung Galaxy S10e and the Google Pixel 3a XL. And what I want to talk about in this video are the displays on these phones. Now, in my opinion, the display of a phone is usually the most important part of the phone. Because it's, you know, it's like the eye to the human body, you know. Um, you, you really, the better the display you have, the more enjoyable your experience will obviously be since everything is seen through the display. So, um, I would say next to that would be your cameras uh, right behind that. But um, the beautiful thing here is... Um, I think as we're going to see in this video, is that both of these phones have good displays. As a matter of fact, I would say the S10e here, even though it's really Samsung's entry-level phone into their, you know, lineup, uh, has just a really, really nice display. I mean... Especially um, for the price, and you know, this phone retails $749. Uh, I think you're getting a really solid display here for the money. So let's go ahead and look at this. Um, as you can see here, very, very uh, bezel-less design here. Not, not very big on the bezels here. Do have a, a little bit bigger bezel there on the bottom. But you're dealing with a super AMOLED panel here, guys. And this is a top-of-the-line display. Now, it's not quad HD. It's 438 on the PPI. It's a 5.8-inch display. It does have a cutout there for your front-facing selfie camera. Um, personally... I definitely prefer this cutout versus, say, the iPhone's notch. As a matter of fact, I got the iPhone right here. Let's take a quick gander at that. See that notch there? Nah, nah, that's, to me, that's too big. Too much going on there. Um, so I definitely prefer this, uh, you know, this approach as a matter of fact, like when you're watching YouTube videos, it, it, it's kind of like a channel logo. If you hold it like this, you don't even really pay attention to it. Okay, so the other thing I really like about this display, besides its calibration, because it's beautifully calibrated, and besides the implementation of the camera there, is the fact that it's flat. Okay, because that's the thing. With the S10, S10 Plus, Note 10, Note 10 Plus, those have curved displays. And so on the edges, you know, it drops off like a waterfall on each side. And I don't like that. That's, you know, it's, it's okay. It's usable. It looks sweet sitting on the table when you're not using the phone. But for usability, I really prefer a flat display. And I've discussed this in you know, some of my other videos, obviously. But that's the one thing I don't particularly care for on the uh, OnePlus 7 Pro, which I'm using to film this video, is I just... That's, if I could change just one thing about that phone, it, I'd give it a flat display. Now, they did come out with the 7T, which has a flat display, but then you lose the Quad HD display. So, uh, I didn't, I, I thought about getting the 7T, but I didn't do it. I got this instead, um, just because I wanted to try a Samsung again, and I just, for whatever reason, have been really uh, wanting to get this particular phone. And I got a good price on it, so I went for it. So just a great display here, guys. Viewing angles, really, really solid. This, um, this is where you're going to see this phone 
uh, really be better than the Pixel 3a XL is on the viewing angles. It's pretty much a flagship display. I mean, it's not quite Quad HD, but as I said, the iPhone, this is the 10s Max. This has 458 PPI. This is 438. So Apple considers 458 their standard of, you know, best display. So this is pretty much up to that. It's not in the 500s like the other Samsung phones, but, well, except the Note 10. It's better than the Note 10, okay? So we can give it that. Um, but, you know, just solid, solid display here. And, of course, we got this sweet always-on display, um, which is very customizable, by the way. And so let's look at the Pixel 3a XL here. Okay, here we've got a 6-inch, so slightly bigger, okay, um... 6 inch display here and this is at 402 ppi okay so we do have a reduction here and how uh, sharp the display looks but not by much you know it's still i would say it's still perfectly fine i don't think you'd want to go any lower than this like with the iphone 11 at 326 uh, it's kind of pushing the envelope in my book, um, but it does. They, that does have a good display on it. I, I've seen it, um, and it does look nice. But 401 is good here, and probably the sweetest thing about the display here is you've got no uh, notch, no cutout, so you just got straight display here. Uh, that's an advantage to this. Now you do have these bigger head and chin bezels here, but really guys, I mean, unless you're a stickler for the sweet design like you got here, it's perfectly fine. I mean, I don't have a problem with the bezels at all, but it does give it a slightly older school vibe, I would say, but Again, Google brings a nice display here for the money. Now, I would not call this a top-of-the-line display like we got here. This is more of a mid-range display because, as you can see with the viewing angles, eh, it falls apart a little bit. It's just not up there with the S10e in quality, okay? But the calibration is great. I have it set on natural right now. Why don't we get into that? Because this is important to be able to see um, how you can calibrate your display um, because that can make a big difference um, in how things look. Okay, so if we go into each of the phone's display settings here. So... Um, Let's see, screen mode. Now, Samsung kind of waters it down, I guess, a little bit for the S10e, okay? Because what they're giving us here is vivid or natural. And then you can also, if I turn off the blue light filter, because I keep that on, uh, you can switch between these two, as you can see there. And then you've got warm to cool, and then you can change also the RGB uh, tweaking of the display. Now from what I remember, my Note 8 had a lot more options here, if I'm not mistaken. At least like maybe four or five different modes. So I'm assuming, unless they've done this with all their S10 and Note 10 stuff, I'm assuming that for the S10e they watered it down a little bit. Um, I'm not for sure on that, but this is what you got here. It's, it's decent. I would like to see some more options, but at least we got the Vivid, and that's what ultimately matters, right? And then here... Um, if we go to the same type of deal here, 
we've got three different modes here. We got natural, boosted, and adaptive. Okay, usually I've been having it on natural recently just to make it different. Um, but boosted is nice and adaptive is nice. Um, usually I keep it on uh, boosted, um, but natural is where I've had it recently. But they both have always on displays. And that's really sweet. Now, obviously, with the Samsung version here, you can really tweak this big time. I mean, it has a lot of um, options as far as tweaking. Okay, so let's see here. Um, yeah, I'm trying to see where you customize it at. Um, clock style, always on display. So you've got all these different options here. And you can pick any of these. And then you've got the colors. Okay. So really, really nice setup here with the always on display. Okay, here, pretty much no tweaking whatsoever, really, with the always on display. But again... I am running Android 9 still on the Pixel 3a XL here, so that might be different. And that goes for the color saturation, too, because this phone does have 10 now. I've just not updated it to that because of my other phones being at 9. Okay, so it might have more options here, guys, but for now, at least on 9... Um, the always on display, very basic, okay, but at least it has it, because a lot of phones, you know, don't even have it, like an iPhone, so at least it has it, so guys, yeah. So these are my thoughts on the displays between the S10e and the Pixel 3 XL, um, as I said, obviously, I think the S10e, uh, you're going to feel maybe a little bit more premium here with this one. But they're both good here, guys. So, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Peace out.